I consider myself to be one of the most fortunate people in the world. Think of it. All my life, I did things that I liked and was passionate about. All my life, I worked in companies that I had started and made a good living with them. And all my life, I was fortunate enough that my ideas were recognized and used by millions of people. So I'm here to share my story with you, hoping that at the end, you would be inspired and motivated to do the same thing. Because I started from nothing. And I believe that the fact that you're here today says that you are fortunate, that you have a lot of opportunities ahead of you, and that I hope that you will see them, grab them, and act on them. One thing that I love in life is arts, especially calligraphy. And what you see here is a greetings card in Arabic. The other thing that I like in life is technology. I'm always curious about how things are done. But my history with calligraphy is when I was a kid, most of the time I lived away from my family, so I had to send greetings cards. And these cards, I used to draw them with my hands and send them by email. Not by email, obviously. By mail. This goes back in the 60s, 70s, and so on. There were two reasons why I do, was doing that. One is because I liked calligraphy, so I liked drawing these cards. And the second is because it was the cheapest way to send a greetings card. In 1975, I came to Canada to study computer science. And three, la three years later, I was feeling comfortable enough with computer science and programming. So I said, why don't I surprise my family by sending them this time a greetings card drawn by the computer of University of Montreal? So I started thinking how to do that. And I quickly realized that it was not as simple as I thought. The word or the sentence greetings or happy, happy holidays in Arabic was Eid Said, and it contained two same letters, two letters that were written differently depending on their position in the word. So I looked at this Arabic language that I studied back home in Algeria, which I saw all my life. I started realizing that Arabic letters, there are 28, were written differently depending on their position in the word or in the sentence. So I said, what a complex language. How can I program this? But the good news is that in all this nonsense and complexity of sh uh, letters changing shapes based on their position, there was some logic. And I love logic. So I quickly developed an algorithm that would select automatically the shape of each letter depending on its position in the word or in the sentence. I program it, and quickly after, the computer of University of Montreal was writing my greeting card to my family. I folded it, put it in an envelope, and sent it back home. And to my disappointment, they didn't understand a thing. But for me, I learned something. I learned that languages are written differently. If there is logic, there's a solution. And so from there, I wanted to share with you some of my business adventures. I used that algorithm to build my first company. First of all, that idea turned out to be unique. For me, it was basic. And it was patentable, which we patented later on. In my first company called Alice, we built products that were usable in English and Arabic and other languages. We sold them in the Middle East and through other partners in Europe and in the US. And things were going well. And one day, we got a call from Microsoft. We're a small group in Ville Saint Laurent. You get a call from Microsoft. They're interested in your technology. They want to license it. Everybody was excited. After this hard negotiation, we made a deal, and we were both happy. 
They were happy because they got the best terms for their company. But I was happy too, because they didn't know that what interestry, interested me most was not the money and the terms and the conditions, but to see Microsoft adopt an idea that I had at the University of Montreal, implement it in its product, and have millions of people use it after. So that was the first project. The second one after that, I said, and for me, once that's done, I said, I, I was done with the project. That, that, that's it. For me, after that, it was distributors uh, increasing the volume of sales, and uh, it was of no interest to me. So I already had my next idea, and I wanted the bigger challenge. I wanted to be able to develop a technology that was to be used and bought in the Western world. Because I felt that the first one was a combination of two things that I knew one of them was Arabic and the other one was technology. So how about going and competing with the rest of the world, the innov innovators, on, on an even field, which is just pure technology. So I looked at what, what was available then, and at that time, uh, Microsoft just introduced Windows. Unix was very popular with uh, big carriers. And so I built, and, and, and we started having these services where you do online banking by phone, so I built the first product that combined the user friendliness of Windows with the robustness of Unix to provide a product that's easy to use, easy to create applications, easy to manage the applications, but robust and reliable enough to run telco grade services. Telco grades, telcos are carriers like Bell Canada, AT&T, Verizon, and so on. This product was later on sold and used by the biggest telephone carriers in the world, AT&T, Bell Canada, France Telecom, and the others. And that was, for me, the biggest satisfaction. Later on, we had a company like um, Intel, a microprocessor manufacturer, who came and invested in our company. We got the front page on um, business page of uh, the Gazette at that time. And sometime after, we grew the company and then sold it to Bell Canada. And again, the minute the technology was proven, was endorsed and adopted, for me, the mission is over. I think about something else. So already in that company, I was thinking about the next thing. And the next thing for me was the telephone in business, the way it is today, is stupid. You call people on weekends, it rings. Um, there are a lot of things that I didn't like where I saw room for improvement or room for change. But then when I told this story to a friend of mine who is a, a business teacher at HSC, he knows my personal story. And so he told me, actually, your first company is not the one where you did the language stuff, the multilingual processing company. In fact, I told him that when I was, I was young, I did something else. This is where it all started. What you see here is a farm. It's in Algeria. But I have to be honest with you. This is not Algiers, the beautiful Algiers. This is not a big regional city on the Mediterranean Sea. It's not even a village. It's outside the village. No water, no electricity, and obviously no phones. In fact, this is the best place to innovate. This is the best place where you get the greatest ideas. There's nothing. So it's boring, except the brain that was boiling under the sun and thinking about what to do. And what to do, I did. So I said, why don't I make my own toys? So I took whatever was available there, which was cans, cans of tobacco, cans of tomato, steel wire, and I started making toys that you just take a stick and push them around and you look great. You walk, you turn, and... But I quickly realized also, because I'm, you know, curious, I realized that when we turn this toy, it's the axle that turns, like the old carrot. But when I look at the tractor of my ankle, 
the wheels turn parallel, like all the cars we have today. So why is my toy not turning the wheels the way tractors turn the wheels? And so what we did is, what I did was think about a solution. I spent hours under the sun against the advice of my parents. And at the end, I got something that actually turned with the wheels, the cans, turning in parallel. So I went to, I went to my cousins and the kids in, in the farm and showed off. I said, look, look what I have. It turns like the tractor. So everybody was impressed. So the point in this story is, and what you want to take away, I want to give you some tips here, is question things. When you see a lot of people accept the way things are, you can. But if you question them, it's a good exercise, at least intellectual exercise. I built this, the company of today, Speech Mobility, to go and address some of the issues that I look at. To look and imagine and think about, can communications be intelligent? Can the phone know where you are and if you want to take a call or not? Yes, we can. This is Obama's. Uh, can your name be your ID? You don't need your phone number. If I want to say, call John, it calls John. That's it. If I want to send a fax to John, send a fax to John. Or... And then, why not work from anywhere? So when you, have, when you innovate, you have an issue because you're different and you find obstacles. So one of the obstacles is banks. We all thought that banks were there to help you when you needed money. It's the opposite. Have confidence in yourself. Believe in yourself. Go against the odds. Go against the skeptics. And do what you feel like. Dream. And make your dreams reality. That should be the main and only motivation to go and build your project. The minute you think that this is an idea to make money, you're lost. You're, go you're not going to make money. So I'm here in front of you to tell you that anything can happen. I came from this place, nowhere in the middle of the Algerian desert, if you could call it. And I ended up, you know, from these little toys, I ended up designing and selling some of the most innovative technologies in the world today to make people what we have as products today are innovative even for our era and our North American advanced technology. To tell you that everything is possible, I wanted to come back and tell you about the story of my toys. So the toys, when the kids were impressed and were happy, they went to their family, their mom, they were crying, so they wanted to buy to get, to get the toys, to make so that I could make toys for them. So what I did is I said, okay, can you go and get me something in exchange because I have labor, I have material here, you know, you have to do all of these things. So they got me what they had, which was eggs and wheat. So I accumulated eggs and wheat, gave them to my mom while I was building all these products. So I had a factory of all of my own at the age of eight. And uh, from that, I took, uh, I took all the wheat and all the eggs, went to a store, sold that, got candies, cookies, came back and sold the candies and cookies because we had none in the farm, made some profit and put the profit at the bank. After that, I took all that money that was accumulated and I wanted to fix one problem that I had, and that is to get transportation so to go to school. Where I lived was eight kilometers away from school. So every day I had to walk 16 kilometers to go to school. So I took the bike, and I was very happy to be driving my own product. Well, well, not my own product, but at least something that I bought with my own efforts. And then I went to school, and I was happy not to be walking under the rain and all of that. And at the end of each day, uh, when people saw my bike, and it was one of the few bikes in the village, they liked it. And so they said, can I try it? So they tried it, and then after that, some other people said, can I try it too? I said, hold on here. There's, a, there's, there's something. I can't give you try, try. 
so can you pay something? And they said, yeah, I'll pay. So they started paying rides. And before I knew it, everybody knew at what time I finished school, because that's when I bring my bike. And there were lineups to rent my bike. And every day, I was going back home with a bill. And the bill, we had coins, obviously, but the bill is the equivalent. The first bill, or the smallest bill in the Algerian currency, was equivalent to the salary of a farmer for about one month. So every time I was giving that, it was the equivalent of a dollar. The bike was, the, was bought for the equivalent of three dollars at that time. And I was giving it to my mother. So that's, but at the end of the day, I always think, what if it was my last night in this life? What did I do? And I take some satisfactions. And one of the satisfactions is that what I did helped people. What I did made millions of people access technology without giving up their culture. What I did was to put a smile on my mother's face. And that's the most important thing that I get from my, from my career as, an, as a, a serial entrepreneur, as some people like to call me. So what I want you to take away with you today is believe in yourself. Everything is possible. Opportunities are going to be in your way more often than you think. Spot them, grab them, and act on them. Thank you all.